Hello, I'm Dr. Jenny Boni William, and I'm going to be taking you through Academic Skills and Studying with Confidence, Week 15. So, at the last podcast for Week 13 and 14, we talked about Introduction to Literature Review. We talked about what is a literature review. So, literature review is you engaging with the literature, talking about the strengths, the weaknesses, the similarities, giving us published information about a particular topic. So a literature review is not about you giving us a list of the sources. We also talked about the importance of a literature review. So literature review helps you to know what are the existing research in that particular field of study. It helps you to discover any form of connections. How is it relevant to your topic? When you do a literature review, you are able to find out the seminal classical works on your literature on the, your particular topic so when you do a literature review you are able to discover the seminal or the classical works on that particular topic it helps you to, do, to be able to see any connections between the topics you find out what are the research findings so the, the research focus on using a specific method such as qualitative research interviews and focus group or quantitative research the use of questionnaires for example we also talked about at the last podcast the good features of a good presentation we also talked about at the last podcast the features of a good literature review and a bad literature review so a good literature review is clear is coherent it has a set of questions guiding the literature the reader so a good literature review is clear it is coherent it has a set of questions guiding the reader it flows logically but a bad literature review it moves from topic to topic without any clear focus a good literature review has references so it follows the university style guidelines it is written in the third person not in the first person so there is no use of i in a good literature review. A poor literature review, on the other hand, you have instances whereby the writer refers to first person using I. There could be missing references in the literature review as well. That is an example of a poor literature review and you want to avoid that in your literature review. So for today's session, today's podcast, week 15, we are going to be focusing on the process of conducting a literature review. We are also going to be talking about strategies of doing a literature review. So if you click on the lecture slides, you will find out that there is a YouTube link there which has done been done by a professor in America. If you click on that link, you would see a thorough explanation of the process of conducting a literature review and the strategies of doing a literature review. So I'm going to go over them step by step. So when you're doing a literature review, a few things you need to think about. You need to choose the topic. You, If you don't choose a topic, then you're going to find out that you're just going to waste time reading and your writing is not going to have any clear focus. You need to choose a literature review topic. The second step is you need to locate the literature review sources. Where can you find literature review sources? The second step is that you need to locate the literature review sources. So what you need to think about is where can I find journal articles, books, websites, reputable journals that I can use for my research. The one-stop shop is the LTU Moodle platform. When you click on that, you must have received your login details by now. When you click on that, you have access to over 400,000 electronic sources. You don't have to be physically present in LTU. You can see all these resources in the comfort of your home, on your laptop, desktop, or whatever device that you're using. In terms of locating the literature review, you need to focus on reliable sources of information. So reliable sources of information are available on the LTU Moodle platform which is Wiley, Jastor, Emerald, Elsevier, and so on. You can find them on the platform. You also have access to FT Financial Com websites, information. You also have access to the World Bank, United Nations 
World Health Organization. These are reputable websites. You can get information because on this international organization's website, they have a lot of policy papers, research papers that have been commissioned to academics, professors to do, and you can be you can view them. If you also go on the Gov.uk website, you would also have access to research that has been conducted. So, for example, research done on the impact of small and medium enterprises on the UK economy. You can find that on the Gov.uk websites. The next step you need to follow is you need to analyze and evaluate the literature review sources. So, only use the sources that are relevant to your topic. Do not use any top, any source that is trivial. You need to always think about it. Is it a reliable source of information or is it unreliable? If it's Wikipedia, do not use such um, information or Instagram posts or a Facebook posts. Those are not reliable sources of information. They are unreliable sources of information. And then you write, you edit, and you refine the literature review. So, in steps, in terms of, so in terms of doing your literature review, in terms of writing, the first thing you need to do is you need to extract the summaries. So, you have identified for the in the beginning of a literature review five key seminar works. So, you extract the summaries. What is the summary of that paper? Paper one, paper two, to paper five. You then reorder those summaries. So remember, these summaries are written in your own words. You reorder the summaries. You divide them into body paragraphs in a word document. You shape the paragraphs and then you add your introduction and conclusion. So when you are reordering the summaries, you reorder them based on what they are talking about. So maybe paper one and paper two could be reordered closely to each other because maybe they're talking about the definition or the historical development. Paper three and four could be focusing more on a cause and effect perspective. And then paper five and six could be focusing more on recommendations. Paper seven and eight could be focusing more on the gaps in the literature. So the problems that were encountered, for example, during data collection and why a particular research method, quantitative or qualitative, has been used. It's the strengths and weaknesses of your particular topic could be a way you can also reorder the summary. So we focus on the definition, Historical development, you order the summaries in that way. You then move to more complex information, the cost and effects. You move to that, move to the research findings. And when you do that, you then see a complete picture, a complete snapshot of your literature review. That is just the beginning. So that is just to help you to write a literature review. It is just the beginning steps for you to craft your literature review. The literature review provides a high level summary of the literature in the field related to your particular topic. So it helps to tell you what has been done in terms of research in your topic area. Who has done it? You are able to highlight the past research what does the past research tell you about the topic? What is the gap? So based on the research that you have done, is there something, a particular area or subset that you cannot find much information about in the literature? That is a gap in the literature. So I will give an example. So for example, should Zara introduce cultural diversity training program? If so, what should the program consist of? So this is a topic. So in terms of literature review, in terms of what Zara is investigating about, Zara needs to know that the experts have done the research. The professors, the academics, the policy officers, government policy officers have done the research. They have researched the answers. They have published their findings through policy reports, 
databases, journal articles, they have the results. All you need to do is to find the answers. So your published findings is the literature review. So their published findings, what the researchers, the academics, the government policy officers have done, what they have published is called the literature. When you search for them, it is called the review. Hence, we have the literature review. In terms of choosing a literature review topic, you need to think about a topic that is meaningful. meaningful. So in terms of choosing a literature review topic, you need to think about a topic that is meaningful for you and for your field. You also need to narrow this down and broaden it. So this is the reason why you need to have a set of questions, research questions, because you need to have a purpose. Who are your audience? Who are the people going to read your work? Because you are also constrained by time, you're also constrained by access in terms of data. So the university would have given you a dead deadline for assignment submission. So you need to be thinking about this. The focus of your research should be stated. You need to have a well-defined question. Because to do your literature review, to do your research, it needs to be researchable and it needs to be a manageable topic. In terms of locating in terms of locating the literature review sources you need to find out what are the key terms the key words that you need to use you need to develop a search strategy because otherwise if you just type in your, your full topic into JASTA or Wiley you can have over hundred thousand of journal articles and it is not possible for you to read all those journal articles so you need to be creative and use keywords that focus on your topic so think about your topic what are the things you need to think about in terms of your topic what are the useful keywords you can put into the search box on the library platform on the LTU module platform you also need to be thinking about creating your own library because any information you are getting from these journal articles or books, you need to note it down. So we have softwares that are very easy to use. We call them reference management software like Mendeley. It is very easy, free. You don't need to pay for Mendeley. You just, all you need to do is to register, open an account, type Mendeley and you have access to this information. So with Mendeley, you are able to save your references, have a library in Mendeley, you save your PDF documents. So uh, while you go on LTU, you are able to sync the information that you download from the LTU library and link that, sync it with your Mendeley library. So you need to be thinking about analyzing and evaluating literature review sources. So in terms of reading, it is not possible for you to read every single journal article. So this is where you are looking at the literature review sources, thinking about your topic, thinking about your research questions, which are the key papers that will help me to draw more light, answer my research questions. So you need to determine the value of these papers, which ones need to be included in my review and which ones do I not need to include, so which ones do I remove from the review. When you've had a look at that, you will then be able to document the themes and the issues discussed in all these key papers that are relevant to your research question. Then you can interpret and you can also summarize their content. All of this you do that within the analyzing and evaluating the literature review sources. All you are doing is you are trying to streamline the, the, the sources that are in front of you and you want to find out which ones should I include in my literature review, which ones are trivial or not relevant. So the ones that are relevant, what are the key themes? How are they addressing my research question? Then what are they saying? Is there any of these studies, for example, that has also been carried out, not just in the UK, but elsewhere? Was there a difference in the findings, a variance in the findings? Has any of this research, for example, led to what we call a change or an influence in the governance 
um, policy in the UK. So, for example, in terms of corporate governance, we have the Higgs review, that re Higgs reports that reviewed the role and effectiveness of non-executive directors in the UK. That report was commissioned by the UK government to academics, professors, to review non-executive directors, what is their role on the board, especially in listed companies, companies that the stock exchange or in PLCs, what do non-executive directors do? This report was commissioned by the UK government. Academics did the research and because of that, that has influenced our corporate governance in the UK. So, you then move to the writing, editing, and refining the literature review stage. You need to be able to think about theory. What is it, the relevant theories in your, the literature? It's a, it should reveal to you a thorough understanding of current knowledge. How does that impact your research question? So, the theories that you've read in the different papers, what are the implications? How does that affect your impact your research question? Does it add to it or do you have further questions, for example? The completion of literature review, it requires editing, revising, refining your work. And here we can, at LTU, we can offer you assessment matrices that can help you to do that. So we move to the structure of literature review. This helps you, starts off with the introduction. In the introduction bits, you write about the purpose of the review, what you want to achieve with this literature review, a brief overview of your topic area, the statement of the problem. What problem are you trying to answer? Remember, you have your research questions. It is important that within the introduction, you identify, you state, the literature sources you have used and the key search items you have outlined. So when you are looking for different journal articles or books or other reliable sources of information, you may have excluded some search times, search terms. So when you are looking for literature sources, you are looking for journal articles, websites, you may have excluded some key search terms. This is a time for you to mention and state why you have excluded them or why you have included some key search terms in your literature review. If there are any limits, boundaries, or inclusion or exclusion criteria, this needs to be clearly described in the introduction part. You might need to comment on what you found out in the literature. Was there a depth or a wealth of literature on the topic? Are you focusing on the research done within a particular time frame? You mentioned this in the introduction. Are you excluding research done in developing countries, for example, in Africa? Are you excluding the research done in some parts of Europe? You need to exclude this. You need to mention this in your introduction. So after the introduction, you move to the main body. In the main body, you use terms, phrases such as the report presents and encompasses the findings from the literature. The literature is central to the topic that you're analyzing. Note that in the main body, you are not just telling us about a description of 10 or 20 papers that you have studied. You are reviewing the literature. You are doing what we call critical thinking and critical analysis. You are outlining the similarities, the differences, the weaknesses, the strengths, giving us more information about the topic, the findings within these pieces of work. This is what you are doing in the main body of your literature review. And then you then move to what we call the conclusion. So your conclusion, you are concluding with a summary of the findings. You are telling us what you have already told us in your main, in the main body. You are telling us the current knowledge. So your summary must include the current knowledge and also offer a rationale for future 
research. So based on the topic you have done, you have be your research, the review you have done, you have become an expert in this topic. So here, based on what you've done, you are then offering future researchers, future students, telling them, advising them that based on the work you have done, you suggest, you advise that you should conduct further research on this area. The literature is central to the topic and therefore should be analyzed in depth. So in your review, you are talking about the parts of the study. You are also talking about the gaps that you have identified. All of this must flow logically in the study. So in terms of writing, when you extract the studies, in terms of writing, when you extract the summaries, the first thing you do is you move the citation information to a list by itself. You can easily do this by using Mendeley. In terms of the summaries, ensure that you keep the author's last names and the dates of publications. This will help you when you are doing your in-text citation according to Harvard referencing style. At this point, you don't need the page numbers because you are summarizing the entire work. If you notice that there is a particular page that has a specific information that you might need to refer to in your literature, you can also save it too and make a note, for, note of it within your drafts. The next step that you focus on is you reread and reorder the summaries. You reread the summaries and rearrange them for discussion. Remember, what you are doing now is you are engaging in what we call the building blocks of a literature review. The literature review, you are still building the blocks. So you've read, extracted the summaries from the relevant papers. Now you have you have brought about the key summary from each paper. You are then rearranging them for a discussion. This could be in an alphabetical order, or this could be in a particular format, in a logical way. So problem, solution, cause and effect, the impact, negative or positive. You then rearrange the summaries into an organized list of forces to help you to find connections among them. Is there any relationship between the summaries? Are there similarities? Are there differences? within the research done in a particular country or region and why is that the differences are they because of the research method that was carried out maybe there's any difference in terms of research finding for research done with the quantitative research method questionnaire or with the qualitative research if there is a variance you make a note of this then you move to rereading and reordering the summary so the first time you try to reorder them you might not discover or find out all the patterns but when you reorder them you reread them you might find out that the way you rearrange them the second time might be in a better way and might help you to find out more connections between them and then you divide them into what we call body paragraphs you then decide which summary should stand alone as a body, which ones should be combined. So for example, if the, the sum, one or two of the summaries are talking about problem, you would want to join them together. The ones talking about solution, you join them together. The ones about cause and effects or historical development, you join them together. And then you then begin to think about how you are going to write about these different summaries. How many paragraphs, how many lines are going to be in the paragraph? So we always recommend that you limit your paragraphs to a reasonable length, which is 10 to 14 lines long. And then you begin to shape the paragraphs. So remember, this is still a draft of your literature review. You begin to think about each paragraph. It requires a topic sentence. So you have rearranged the summaries and you're thinking about a topic sentence to introduce the source or the sources you have discussed about. When you have more than one source in a paragraph, you may want to think about a transition or a thought bridge in order to connect them together.
And then you move to the introduction and the conclusion. Because once you've done all the rearranging of the summaries, you've put them in a logical format, you begin to see that your literature review is beginning to take some form of order and it is beginning to take some shape. So you think about your opening paragraph. What are you going to include in your introduction? You can start by broadly introducing the overall topic. So again, we are using cultural diversity as a topic. So you could talk about the impact of cultural diversity on communication, and then you gradually funnel down and narrow to the more complicated or complex parts of your literature review. Your introduction signals to the readers, it gives them a signal that they will be reading a literature review. They will be engaging and finding out about the different sources, different key pieces of research you found out. When you do your introduction, the reader knows that it is not about your individual claims or your arguments or your opinion. It is about introducing them to the topic. And then, you then move to the main body, whereby you answer the different research questions, and then you move to the conclusion. So one common strategy for the conclusion paragraph is you open with what we call a restatement of the thesis, a restatement of your research problem, your research topic that you have been researching. This will help to refocus the reader, make the reader to think about the overall points and to bring the discussion in full circle. Within your conclusion, this is a time to also comment on any gap or flaw in the research that you have reviewed. And finally, you will end with any reflections on how the digital review relates to the overall field in which your topic is situated. If you click on the link in terms of the lecture slide, you will see a video. I would encourage you to click on that link and practice. Get, pick up a few pieces of reliable information, journal articles, and practice extracting the summaries, reordering the summaries, in terms of how they are connected to each other, shaping the paragraphs, and then moving to your introduction, the body of your literature review, and your conclusion. So this podcast, we have talked about how you can conduct a literature review using different key search strategies, also summarizing key pieces of work in that particular field rearranging the summaries, ensuring that you save your references using the Mendeley software, also sticking to the Harvard referencing style. Thank you for listening to this podcast.